Thanks for your company. With me now, David Gazard and Ben Oquist. Let's talk about, uh, well, the big story of the last week. Amazing story. And, and world leaders continue to congratulate, speak to Joe Biden, the president-elect. Our prime minister is going to be doing that in the next 24 hours, um, I'm advised. And you've got Macron today, Trudeau yesterday, you know, speaking to Biden. And yet the incumbent still hasn't conceded, David. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it does seem a bit odd. Um, that, that, that said, I mean, this is play, has played out before. Um, we all remember probably in our lifetimes hanging chads sure. with uh, George W. Bush, so it went to the courts. There is a mechanism for dealing with that, but you sort of get the feeling the train's left the station. Um, major leaders of the world are ringing and phoning in their congratulatory mess messages, and I saw a poll today that said 80% of Americans believe Biden won. Yeah, OK, 80%, that's emphatic. Uh, yeah. This scenario where, well, let's look at the result, the fact that Biden did win, president-elect, and he brings with him some implications for Australian policy. I've been looking at that in detail today by talking to the climate minister from Fiji. They were the first to congratulate Biden on the win because there are climate implications of having Biden in the White House for Australian policy. First to congratulate him and to raise climate change, as have other world leaders. There obviously are uh, global implications for climate policy with Biden win. It's uh, un un unquestionable. Um, going back into Paris, uh, he has an ambitious climate plan, most ambitious climate plan that any president or um, major party candidate in the United States has ever had. And that's going to um, uh, infect, in a good way, uh, global uh, negotiations. And it is going to put pressure on Australia. One of the areas that hasn't been quite discussed yet that I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on Australia, I heard Angus Taylor on with you a moment ago talking about the focus on 2030. He's right. The needs to be a lot of 20, focus on 2030 as well as 2050. But remember, Australia is only going to supposedly reach its 2030 target by the use of uh, these Kyoto carryover credits. A and Biden has said that he is going to be call calling out cheating in the international neg negotiations. And uh, Australia is now diplomatically isolated as Jap Japan, South Korea, China all go for net zero. Biden wants net zero. Biden's got an ambitious uh, plan for 2035 in his country and wants to call out cheating. Australia is lining up with Brazil and Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia and is going to be diplomatically isolated on this issue. This has got big geostrategic implications for Australia's trade. And you watch this issue of Kyoto carryover credits. We've been talking to countries in the Pacific who are agitated by it in the lead up to Glasgow, immense diplomatic pressure on Australia to stop the cheating um, by using kind of $430 million, 430 million tonnes of these cheating Kyoto carryover credits. I, I, th I personally think that there is a very real chance that Angus Taylor compromises on that and on the 2050 target. He, the Prime Minister, as you know, is pragmatic. He's not ideological on these matters. And if he thinks they can do it without that, they'll do it. I think a lot of what... What uh, Ben said is hyperbole. Um, I, I don't think there's any resistance there. I've, I think um, Australia va may very well make it without the carryover credits. Um, Good. The, the, the thing that, you know, I mean, setting aside diplomatic ructions, the coalition has been very, very clear that it wants to know before it goes down the track of making a whole range of commitments what the cost is. Mm -hmm. You know, that that is the key, right? And that's what people care about, they want to know before they get taken down the garden path again by parties like the Greens who who commit to these huge reforms without laying out the cost. Sure. Bill Shorten saw that to his cost at the last election and, and the, the PM has been absolutely consistent sure. on that point. What is the cost? But there's What's... also, the, you know, I spoke to Matt Keane, <clears throat> the Liberal Energy Minister, Liberal Party Energy Minister in New South Wales, yesterday who says... He's going to... His plan will generate $32 billion in private sector investment in their state infrastructure over the next decade. This, this, is, is, yeah, this, this is not a greenie. This is, well, you know, yeah. a, a Green Party member. He's the Liberal... One of the things I think, you know, um, Angus Taylor has been really good at in, in the, the energy roadmap is to be a completely agnostic. If you can make that pay, and there's... I, th I think the government has moved more to the centre on this. They are completely agnostic about energy yeah. source... They need dispatchable power, which is gas, to keep the whole thing running.
But if if you can wash your own face with a with a project, go for your life. Joel Fitzgibbon um, has been a headache for Anthony Albanese for some time on this issue, but there are others who believe that Anthony Albanese also needs to sharpen up, not just on climate, but more broadly, his own message and to be, you know, hungrier, sharper. Uh, you know, what's your sense of where all that is within the Labor Party right now? Well, it's a tough time for oppositions um, anywhere around the world, uh, United States notwithstanding. Um, uh, if you handle the pandemic well, you're going to be rewarded at the ballot box. Uh, Palaszczuk was rewarded handsomely uh, and... W- uh, Scott Morrison is being rewarded for handling the pandemic well. Uh, Australia is doing fantastically, you know. Zero can community cases of transmission. People are valuing the health response. Um, and uh, the economic response, um, notwithstanding his drag kicking and streaming to it, the job keeper yeah. and the job seeker increases, has, has done him well. Um, so there's a tough time for Abbott. Abbott has always said he's playing for the final quarter. I think the problem with Joel Fitzgibbon, I think Labor's probably going to be better off without him there, because I think... If you strip all Joel's arguments away at a political level, what he was saying was that Labor can't win politically on climate change. Now, if you honestly think that, uh, then there, th- those divisions will, will remain. I think Albo and most of Labor realise climate change is, is a big positive. That's the lesson out of the United States. Biden won on climate change. Uh, the, the community is increasingly worried about the costs of not acting. And I think Albo can sharpen up that message um, and do well politically from it. Ben Oquist, David Gazard, great to see you both. Thank you for that. The bottom uh, 20% uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. Wages are growing at their slower, sustained pace. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas. 